You want to come see me, Steve Wilkos? Take a bus. So we did. We actually sat on the phone for like hours at a time to get these free tickets to go see Steve Wilkos throw chairs and yell at irresponsible fathers, rapists, crackheads, junkies, all those great people that I love so very, very much. And, and just support him as he showed them that society was not going to take it. It was society was not going to let you sell your daughter to a 50 year old pedophile for a parrot, even though you claim you didn't even keep it. You sold it anyway, you know, and I wanted I wanted to meet this man, this Stephen Wilkos, this orange man that that comes in and he he supports morals and rights. And so anyway, we finally got the tickets. Finally go, we go at 8 a.m. We're in Times Square. We're about to get on Steve Wilkos' bus. It's got Steve Wilkos on the side. We're in this huge line with all these really excited people. Everybody's so excited. They're talking. They're like, I wonder if a baby's going to get burnt. I hope there's a rape victim on the show today. I hope there's a woman that was beaten so badly she had to be put into the hospital for months. Blah, blah, blah. We're all connecting over the love of watching this this absolute horror show, basically, and the giant orange man who runs it. We uh, finally file onto the bus at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's going to take us to Connecticut to the studio to watch Steve Wilkos perform. And it's instantly made apparent that this is a bus full of people who could be on the show themselves. I mean, the bus driver actually turned out to be on the show the next day, and he said that over the loudspeaker. He said, don't judge a man for crying with Steve when he faces Steve Wilkos, okay? Because you're going to see me tomorrow in front of my mom, my girl, and everything, admitting what I did wrong, and Steve is going to put me in my place, but that's okay. And he did. He was. He was on the show the next day. So it, it was like a community of Steve Wilkos creeps. And on this bus, just that they were blasting... Um, I, b I believe it's called booty bounce music is what I believe the correct term was for it. Singing along, everybody's just so excited. We get in to see Steve Wilkos, and the deal is you get to have breakfast with Steve Wilkos, which is actually just a cardboard cutout of him, of him in front of a table of, like, three moldy, crusty bagels. But it's still breakfast with Steve Wilkos. Then you get to watch it filming. Then you have lunch with Steve Wilkos, again, a an Italian hero with a cardboard cutout of Steve Wilkos. Then you watch another filming. Then you have another little, st you get another chance at the sub, and you watch yet another filming. So we got to see three episodes of the Steve Wilkos show filmed. And I'm the woman, the woman who sat next to me in the audience the first time, um, it turned out that a lot of these people, they're on welfare, and they basically, the audiences of talk shows are like recurring, like that's almost what they do for a living, but they don't get paid. Like when they were talking on the bus about how, yo, it's the Jerry show tomorrow, and then next week we got Montel, and then after that, you know, going on and on and on. This is what these people basically do for a living. They live off our taxes, and then they, they sit in the audience and go, whoop, 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 whoop. It's very American. It's very patriotic. And quite frankly, I was quite, I was really proud to be a part of it. But anyway, the woman next to me had a tendency to scream. So the, the first act was about um, a woman whose baby got burnt. And it was a very bad burn. It was shown on the big screen the entire time, just this horrible wound on this infant. Like, I have no idea how anyone could take a straightener or w or whatever and hold hold it down to an infant to cause this bad of a wound it's up on the big screen and it keeps showing for some reason they keep sh panning to me in the audience i guess because my face was so animated and i can't stop laughing so it's showing an image of a burnt baby and then me laughing because the woman next to me was a professional talk show audience member she came every year, and she screamed so hard back at the guest on stage, like, uh-uh, you know she birthed that baby. Uh-uh, you don't let that go. No, she didn't know that the production manager actually had to come over and say, we tell you this every week. We tell you this every week you come here. Steve, it is Steve Wilkos' job to yell at the guest, not yours. And if you continue, we're going to have to remove and ban you.
the woman instantly became so apologetic and took to just screaming, well, what she considered whispering, but what I consider screaming in a very moist way into my ear these comments so I can't stop laughing despite the burnt baby on the screen and the rape charges and whatnot. And they keep showing my, f they keep, the camera guy keeps getting in my face and I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to be on TV laughing at a burnt baby. It was, it, it was honestly a dream come true. When we saw, when we got to go home, we watched, um, the episodes we had been in the audience for, and I actually got a close-up in the audience as two of them. Yeah, that's my television debut, is a close-up looking shocked and abhorred and also completely um, humorously entertained in the Steve Wilkos audience. That's my big break. That is so far what I've accomplished in my comedy career, and quite frankly, I couldn't be more proud. I am the person in the audience that says, you're right, Steve. It's not okay to rape someone. It's not okay to sell your daughter to a pedophile for an exotic bird. It is, these are all real plot lines of the show, let me just add. It's not okay, Stephen. It is not okay. Throw that chair. Throw it. It was really a beautiful moment, but by the bus ride back, we ended up getting off early at Times Square and walking in the rain all the way. I live in Brooklyn, so I walked all the way to the L from Times Square in the rain to get away from this busload of freaks because, like, the bus driver ended up buying everybody uh, two 24 packs of Bud Light for the ride home. So by the time we reached uh, the border of New York and Connecticut, everybody was absolutely ass trashed and screaming about their favorite m moments of the show. And it just became way too overwhelming. We ended up asking our famous bus driver, who, who again appears on the show, if he could drop us off by early. And we walked solemnly in the rain knowing that that day we had been a part of something. We had been a part of something in society much bigger than the whole. And it was a beautiful feeling, albeit a little bit of a disappointing one, because I can't help but think, what if I never get to see my Steven again? What if that was the end?